So if you're taking any course at the first year algebra level or beyond, you definitely need to know how to solve a problem like this. And what we're talking about is a quadratic inequality. So here is the problem. We have x squared minus 4x minus 5 is less than or equal to 0. All right, so this is a big topic in algebra and more advanced mathematics, i.e. Uh, inequality problems and how to solve them. Now, if you think you know the answer, go ahead and put that into the comment section. I'm going to walk through all the steps on how to think about this problem and, of course, how to solve it. But before we get started, let me tell you who I am. My name is John, and I have been teaching math for decades. And if you need assistance in mathematics, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. So in order to solve a quadratic inequality, it's critical that you already know how to solve a quadratic equation. So here we have x squared minus 4x minus 5 is less than or equal to 0. So we have an equal sign here as part of this uh, inequality statement. So it's less than or equal to. So let's take a look at the equal part. And if we had this problem, x squared minus 4x minus 5 is equal to 0, this is something that you need to know how to do before you understand how to solve a quadratic inequality. All right, so solving quadratic equations is a huge topic in algebra. And if you don't know how to solve quadratic equations or if you're already kind of having a tough time with second degree polynomials, i.e. quadratic functions, well, let me go ahead and give you uh, some quick advice right now. One, I have a ton of additional videos on my YouTube channel that can help you out. Also, you may want to consider like my Algebra 1 or Algebra 2 and or pre-calculus courses. You can find links to all those in the description of this video. But uh, when it comes to solving quadratic equations, especially a uh, quadratic trinomial, here we have three terms. What we want to try to do is factor, all right? So we got to see if we can factor this, and of course we can. And factoring is a huge skill in algebra. And typically students or people that are having a tough time in algebra also are having a tough time in factoring, all right? So if you really want to improve in algebra, make sure you have strong factoring skills. Okay, so x squared minus 4x minus 5, we can factor in the following manner, x plus 1 times x minus 5. Now we can see that these are the correct factors because I can multiply x times x gets me back to x squared, x times negative 5 is negative 5x, and then 1 times x is 1x. Of course, these are like terms, negative 5x plus 1x is negative 4x, and then 1 times this negative 5 is negative 5. So again, these are the correct factors, but anytime you are factoring in algebra and you're not sure that you have the right factors, you can always multiply back in to see if you get back to your trinomial. All right, now this is going to make solving this very easy because we have this thing, this binomial, times this thing, and the answer is zero. So this times this is equal to zero. Well, if I said, hey, I have something, and I'm multiplying it by something else, and the answer is zero, well, what does this tell me about this thing or this thing, right? Well, you can't multiply two things together and get zero unless this thing or this thing or both are zero, right? So if we are multiplying together and we get zero, one or both of these expressions must be equal to zero. Now, what I'm talking about here is something called the zero product property, and this is why we love factoring in algebra, right? Especially when we're trying to solve quadratic equations. So what I can do is actually set each one of these factors equal to zero. So here I have x plus one is equal to zero, and I can solve this, and our answer here is x is equal to negative 1. And then here, I have x minus 5 is equal to 0. And our answer here is x is equal to 5. Now, another uh, critical observation is to realize that we have two solutions. Now, anytime you are trying to solve a quadratic equation, just remember that you will always, always, always have two solutions, whether they be imaginary, complex, or real number solutions. Okay, so our answer here is x is equal to negative 1, 
and x is equal to 5. But how is this going to help us to solve this quadratic inequality? Well, let's uh, go ahead and take the next step and look at this graphically. So I can think of this as a quadratic equation or a quadratic function. So in other words, if I have y is equal to x squared minus 4x minus 5, and I go to graph this thing, the skills are just kind of keep piling up here and things that you have to understand in order to solve quadratic inequalities. But it's critical that you understand how to graph a quadratic function. All right, so let's take a look at the graph here. And the graph is not that difficult to construct because we already know the solutions to this trinomial all right, or this quadratic equation. So if I look at this as a quadratic function or quadratic equation, y is equal to x squared minus 4x minus 5, well, we can actually graph this parabola, right? So the graph or the shape of the graph of all quadratic functions is a parabola, a U-shaped thing. Okay, so here is our solutions. Remember, we have negative 1 and 5 as our solutions to our quadratic equation. So if I set this thing equal to 0, we know that the solutions are these values right here, negative 1 and 5. Now, anytime you have a graph, okay, on the xy axis, and that graph, typically speaking, especially like polynomials, crosses the x-axis, these points here where the graph, the y value, is at 0, these are called the x-intercepts or the real number solutions. So these are the solutions to our quadratic equation. Okay, now of course we're thinking of this as a quadratic inequality, but here is our graph. Now here is the key to solving this problem. All right, so we have to look at the y-axis, okay? So where is this graph positive? Okay, where is this graph positive? Well, here is zero, and this is all the positive values on the y-axis, okay? It's this uh, direction. So this graph is positive over here, okay? So this branch of the parabola is positive, and so is this branch. So now let me ask you, where is this graph negative, okay? Well, this graph is negative right here, okay? This section of the graph. So between negative 1 and 5 is where the graph is negative, and then over here is where the graph is positive. And we're looking at this with respect to the y-axis. And this is going to be key in order to solve this quadratic inequality. All right, so where, let's just kind of think of this, if we think of the graph of this thing, okay, where is it less than or equal to zero? Well, now we know that this thing is equal to zero at those uh, two uh, spots that are the actual solutions, right? So kind of going back over here, that would be negative 1 and 5. But where is this quadratic function, okay, or quadratic equation, or quadratic expression, okay, less than 0? Okay, now we have to address this part. Where is it less than 0? Okay, we know it's 0 here and here. And where is it less than 0? Well, it's less than 0 right here. Okay, so now we're going to talk about how to actually um, verify that and then how to express the solution. Okay, so now let's take a look at this graph and these critical values on it. So remember, we are talking about a quadratic inequality. Now, if we were only talking about a quadratic equation, we already know that our answers here is negative 1 and 5, and this is the graph of this parabola, just kind of a rough sketch of it. Now, this graph is negative from negative 1 to positive 5, right? So all these values right here are underneath the x-axis, okay, i.e., negative on the y-axis. So if we plug in any of these values into our quadratic inequality, it should be negative, right? So we just kind of go back here and take a look at the actual problem. We're trying to determine what values of x are going to produce either 0 or a value less than 0, i.e. negative, right? So we've got to really kind of be thinking about this. What values of x are going to produce 0? Of course, we know those two um, specific values of x, negative 1 and 5, that will produce the value equal to 0. But what values of x will produce values that are less than 0, i.e. negative? And we can just kind of see this graphically, right? So again, values in between 
negative one and five should produce negative values. So we're gonna take a look at that in just one second, but before we do, let's talk about how to express the actual solution to this inequality. Now, before I finish this problem, take a quick second and consider hitting that subscribe button. This really does help my channel grow on YouTube. And the whole reason I want my channel to grow on YouTube is so I can reach as many people as possible and help them in mathematics. I look at every person that uh, has subscribed. Now, by the way, if you have subscribed to my channel, thank you so much. But if you do subscribe to my channel, I consider all of you like students of mine. So I really try to be conscientious and post high quality math content. And my channel covers everything from basic math to advanced math like calculus and everything in between. Now, if you need math support, if you really need to learn mathematics, you definitely have to check out my full main math courses. You can find links to those in the description of this video. And if you are going to subscribe, make sure to hit that bell notification as well so you can get alerts when I post a new video. Okay, so let's go ahead and finish up this problem. So let's talk about how we can express the actual solution to this problem. So there's basically three ways or three very common ways that we can uh, use to express this solution. There's other ways as well, but uh, here we have three different ways we can express the final answer. So remember, we're trying to look for values of this quadratic uh, function that are going to make it less than or equal to zero. So we already know if we plug in negative one and five, we're going to be equal to zero. So negative one and five is part of the solution. And so are all the values that are in between negative one and five. So we can express this three different ways. So one way is kind of using a graph, right? A simple line graph. So what you have is negative one and five, and then you have closed in circles and a line connecting those closed in circles. This indicates that negative one and positive five are solutions. Okay, now if negative one and five were not solutions, you would have an open circle. In other words, if this problem was only less than, well, you would have open circles, but, but because it's less than or equal to, we close the circles. Okay, so this is one way to express this. But uh, you can also express this graph. Instead of circles, you can use these brackets like this. This means the same thing. Or we could use interval notation. So we have the interval uh, negative 1, 2, 5. And these closed brackets means uh, less or equal to as well. In other words, negative 1 is part of the solution. And so is 5. So if we had an open uh, circle, for example, from negative 1 to 5, this would be uh, parentheses, negative one, two, five. Now, if you're not uh, quite familiar with uh, these various notations, as long as you know one, that's what counts. Now, let's just kind of just uh, verify that in fact, this is right, okay? So we can pick some values here. We could pick a random value somewhere to the left of this graph. And if we pick a value, maybe like over here, negative two, negative three, well, we should be in the positive region, right? So when we plug this in, we should get a positive value. Now, if we pick something between negative one and five, we should end up with a negative value. And then if we pick uh, a value greater than five, we should also end up with a positive value. So let's uh, go ahead and do that. And a good way to think of this is the following. So here is our problem. Now, anything uh, that is negative one to five should yield a true statement in this inequality, right? So in other words, if we plug in something in this region, it should be less than or equal to zero. And if we pick a uh, value in these regions, i.e. greater than five and less than negative one, we should end up with a false statement when we plug those values in here. So let's just go ahead and verify that indeed we solved the problem correct or correctly. So here again is our problem and let's just kind of use some simple values. So let's let x equal to negative two. So negative two would be testing this region right here. Now remember, keep in mind that we have our parabola, right? So our parabola is crossing through negative one and five. Okay, so we're testing a number that should be positive, okay? Not negative, so we'll test negative two. And then uh, let's just go ahead and test that value. Then we'll test another value. 
So when we plug in uh, negative 2 into our quadratic inequality, what's going to happen? Now remember, we're going to re uh, replace these x's with negative 2. So we're going to end up with negative 2 squared, which is a positive 4, plus negative 4 times negative 2, which is positive 8, minus 5. So we do all this number crunching, we get 7. So is 7 less than or equal to 0? No, that is false. So we're going to end up with a false statement. So let's take a look at another number here, like x is equal to 0. Now, x is equal to 0 is right in between negative 1 and 5. So this should be true. So let's go ahead and plug that in. So when we replace x with 0, we're going to get a 0 squared, which is 0 minus 4 times 0, which is 0 minus 5. So is negative 5 less than 0? Okay, so in other words, is negative 5 less than or equal to 0? Well, that is a true statement. So x is equal to 0 is, in fact, a good solution. So now let's finally test a value that is greater than 5, like 6. So we're going to end up uh, replacing these x's with 6. So 6 squared is 36 minus 4 times 6 is 24 minus 5. And again, we end up with 7. And 7 is not less than or equal to 0. That is false. Okay, so I covered quite a bit in this problem, and this was actually a fairly simple problem. All right, but the main idea to solving these quadratic inequalities is that one, you need to know how to graph and solve quadratic equations and then kind of combine the connection between those uh, two uh, concepts, right? So remember, when you graph a parabola, okay, or graph a quadratic equation, if it has real number solutions, those will be the points where that graph is crossing the x-axis. Now, if your graph was something like this, right, above the x-axis or beneath the x-axis, i.e. it did not cross the x-axis, what would that tell you? Well, it would tell you that this quadratic equation does not have any real number solutions, so it would have imaginary and or complex number solutions. So a lot of things going on here, and this is why you cannot uh, learn and really master algebra, you know, um, separately. Okay, what do I what do I mean by that? Well, what I'm talking about is that everything is connected to one another in these big topics, right? So like functions, quadratic functions, you know, roots, linear equations, everything is kind of interconnected. So you just can't learn mathematics, you know, kind of in a vacuum, right? You learn one topic and then kind of forget about it and then learn another topic, forget about it. You kind of have to, you know, really just keep those skills and those concepts in mind because, you know, the whole idea of mathematics grows and grows and grows. All right, now hopefully this little video helped you out. And if you need additional help in Algebra, Algebra 1, Algebra 2, Pre-Calculus, I have a ton of additional videos on my YouTube channel. Also, to make sure to check out all my math courses. You can find links to all of those in the description of this video. All right, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.